just wanted to do a video about what's going on with the U.S. and Iran after Iran sent those missile strikes towards those two um, uh, milita U.S. military bases in Iraq yesterday. Um, I guess it would have been in Iraq. And let's take a look and see what President Trump had to say. Weapon. And we'll discuss. Good morning. Not going to listen to all this. I'm pleased to inform you the American people should be extremely grateful and happy. No Americans were harmed in last night's attack. I don't know somebody else pointing this out on Twitter, Twitter, but doesn't it seem like Donald Trump is <clears throat> gasping a lot during the speech, like he's having to take, like to say a couple words of, just exhale <laughs> or inhale and exhale, I should say, like he's just like getting out of breath, just speaking a couple of words at a time. By the <laughs> Iranian regime. We suffered no casualties. I mean, that's a All of our soldiers are safe. They shouldn't and have been there in the first place. Minimal but... damage was sustained <clears throat> at our military bases. Our great American forces are. The Iraqi parliament <clears throat> has voted to expel all U.S. troops out of the country. I think we need to listen to them and their people. They don't want us there. It's not making us any safer. It's putting, you know, those U.S. soldiers in danger. It's costing trillions of dollars. It's still leading to more, um, you know, Iraqis, the civ civilians there dying, <clears throat> as well as other people in the region. Get out. Get the troops home. Prepared for anything. Iran appears to be standing down, which and is a good... which is what they said that they were going to do. They said that if the U.S. and the Trump administration, you know, didn't um, retaliate against Iran and let's say launch airstrikes from <clears throat> Qatar or the UAE or Saudi Arabia, then you know Iran wouldn't, wasn't going to retaliate. This was a defensive attack by Iran for <clears throat> Trump deciding to assassinate. Qasem Soleimani, top Iranian general, the leader of the Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, the Quds Force. He was instrumental in helping defeat ISIS. He was basically a national hero. Around like 70 or 80 percent of the people in Iran supported Soleimani, and he was basically, you know, like I said, a hero to them. <clears throat> for all parties concerned, and a very good thing for the world. No American or Iraqi lives were lost. That's good. I mean, it's good. No people died on either side, the U.S. or the Iraqi side. I'm never in favor of death or war or <clears throat> destruction, but it should also be known that the <clears throat> Iranian government let the Iraqi government know that these attacks, these airstrikes were going to be taking place. I think they let the Iraqi government know, like, basically, you know, this is where it's going to happen. This is what time. So if you want to get your people out of there, even if you want to let the Americans know, or maybe they let the Americans know, you know, additionally through a direct communication or a back channel or whatnot, but I, at least the Iraqi government was made known about these airstrikes, and I think that had a big part to do with why there's no casualties. This was, you know, a retaliation, and, you know, it was just Iran basically flexing its muscle and saying if the U.S., if you keep Pucking around if you keep assassinating our leaders or you know killing more of our people or generals or militia fighters or whatever it is then you know we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna retaliate we're not gonna let you push us around <clears throat> because of the precautions taken the dispersal of forces and an early warning system that worked very well I salute the incredible <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not about the early warning system. It looks like I heard that all of the rockets that Iran launched got through, basically showing that, <clears throat> you know, these U.S. air bases in this region don't have the capabilities to defend from airstrikes, so they would be potentially sitting ducks in a war against Iran and could get, you know, devastated. And the U.S. basically has bases encircling the whole country <clears throat> of Iran, so, you know, Iran, if, they, if it did come to war, they would have a lot of targets. Skill and courage of America's men and women in uniform. If you're really that concerned about 
the troops, listen to the Iraqi government, listen to the people, listen to the American people, get the troops home, get them out of Iraq, get them out of the Middle East. They're not making us any safer. They're putting them, the soldiers in harm's way as, you know, blowback <clears throat> in the future. For far too long, all the way back to 1979 to be exact, Okay, that's enough of Trump. Let's check out this Al Jazeera article we'll discuss shortly. So, I mean, it is, in a sense, the escalation um, by Trump deciding not to retaliate. I, Well, okay, he's not retaliating in a conventional, conventional military fashion. He's saying that he will um, put even harsher economic sanctions, Iran, if that is even possible. We already have these very draconian crippling sanctions in place on Iran right now that have had devastating effects on the economy and the people there, leading to things like food and medicine shortages, leading to um, suffering and, and death. So, you know, we've already, we're already terrorizing them just in an economic way, and Trump plans to do more of that. <clears throat> that's, you know, obviously horrible in its own right and should be condemned. And, you know, I think I truly believe under Sanders administration, um, he would, the Sanders administration, I say, would get rid of those sanctions on Iran and we enter the Iran nuclear deal and find ways, to, um, you know, to increase dip dip diplomatic and, you know, humanitarian ties between the two countries. <clears throat> Let's see. So, I mean, it's positive. We're not at that World War III stage right now, but, you know, obviously those sanctions shouldn't be in place. They're highly illegal and immoral and just, you know, messed up. Iran not interested in war, as I said before. They don't have any interest in starting a war. This was in retaliation. This was a defensive attack for the Soleimani assassination in Baghdad. <clears throat> Let's see. The U.S. told the U.N. that it is prepared to take additional action, quote, as necessary in the Middle East to protect U.S. personnel and interests in the region. Um, I guess that's kind of in reference to, you know, the troops have been called uh, into, into Iraq. And then, yeah, I saw some of this on Twitter as well. So some of the senators and Congress people that had been briefed on so on this you know evidence of this so-called imminent attack that Soleimani was planning against U.S. interests in the region was you know as I speculated before you know it was a bunch of bullshit and it's you know we not we now know from outlets like the gray zone that Soleimani was in fact in Iran negotiate on a peace mission basically that between Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia and Iraq was basically um, playing the mediator in that role. Trump knew that. Trump encouraged Iraqi Prime Minister to help in this process, so he more than likely knew that you know Soleimani was going to be there, potentially setting up him up to you know being assassinated. So, U.S. senators denounced lack of evidence to justify killing of Soleimani. Utah Senator Mike Lee, who belongs to Trump's Republican Party, has questioned the administration's classified briefing on the killing of Soleimani, calling it, quote, the worst, end quote, that he has ever attended. I mean, that's pretty bad, and um, that's coming from a Republican senator. Um, but I believe Mike Lee, he worked with Sanders um, to, you know, stop Trump from you know, giving Saudi Arabia all of those weapons contracts and those weapons sales that they're able to, you know, use to further the genocide that they are uh, perpetrating in Yemen against the Yemenese people. In a press conference in Washington, D.C., Lee told reporters that, that found it, quote, really upsetting that Trump's intelligence officials refused to provide information that led to the president's decision to order Suleimani's killing. Another Republican Senator, Rand Paul, said that he, quote, did not learn anything from the hearing, end quote, that he had not seen previously from news reports adding that prospects for diplomacy has been diminished because of Trump's actions. And then this is from a Democratic Senator, Chris Murphy, quote, there was no evidence of an imminent and specific threat from Suleimani to take the U.S. action. I mean, 
you don't have to be a freaking rocket scientist to to know that for for God's sakes. Um, <laughs> Suleimani was there on a a peace mission for F sake. He wasn't there to plot, you know, to kill Americans or anything like that. He wants Americans. He or should I say he rest in peace wanted Americans out of the region. He helped. The U.S. in fighting and defeating ISIS. He was crucial in that. That's why he's so beloved in Iran. The, you know, look at the millions of people that um, participated in his funeral procession this past weekend. Um, yeah, so this is the, the, the Republican hack, the cult of personality, the cult of Trump, people that who are beholden to, you know, the letter R, no matter, you know, what heinous thing the leader of that party that, you know, the president does or says. So the majority of the Republicans who control the Senate, however, defended the decision. Say like, these people have no backbone, no soul. They're just willing to do and say anything to stay in power, no matter how morally corrupt or bankrupt it you know, it, it makes them become and, you know, forever have that stigma attached to you, like you're defending, you know, these, these war crimes because you believe in American empire or imperialism or why exactly? <clears throat> All right, I could keep uh, chatting on about this for a while, but I just wanted to make a quick video and <clears throat> check in and share a few few thoughts about about this oh and then this was also kind of interesting too so Ukraine does not rule out attack as cause a plane crash in Iran there was this uh, plane that took off from the airport in Tehran I uh, crashed early Wednesday killing all all 176 passengers and crew could have been potentially brought down by a missile or an attack. I mean, the Ukrainian airliner, the Ukrainian international airliner bound for the Ukrainian capital of Kiev plunged from the sky minutes after takeoff from the Iman Komiani, Kom, Komian? I butchered that international airport in Tehran. So, I mean, that's another. It's interesting facet to that to see what exactly was the cause of that uh, plane crash. I mean, so those are the two U.S. military bases that Iran launched the airstrikes from. I mean, look how much. Like Iran's a massive country, too. Kind of interesting to look at that from a geographical perspective like this is it's very big it's very big <clears throat> okay so it's like for now trump has decided to not retaliate with any you know type of military aggression or escalation that's good let's leave it at that iranians aren't going to do anything else unless the u.s does again it needs to be said the iranian airstrikes and the u.s military bases on iraq were in a defensive move in retaliation for Soleimani's execution in Baghdad. They had to do something. They said they wanted a proportionate response. They don't want a war. <clears throat> they didn't want to escalate things, but they had they had to respond, and they, they did, and ended up, you know, having no casualties. So, I mean, it's a, honestly the best-case scenario, and Trump's now just, you know, saying he's going to pursue harsher economic sanctions. Those are obviously... Horrible, unethical, inhumane, immoral, illegal, you know, all of those things and and more. Um, and they, we need to get rid of them. They should have never been there in the first place. We need to be looking for ways to strengthen our diplomatic relations and, you know, humanitarian ties to the um, country of Iran and its people. You know, not looking for ways to collectively punish the population because the U.S. government doesn't like their government. You know, it's the population that suffers. It's not. It's not the government. It's just again, economic sanctions are a form of economic warfare, leading to 
lots of suffering and death, and we already have enough in that, of that in the world. The U.S. doesn't need to be <clears throat> making it any worse. So let's, you know, get let's elect somebody as president who's, you know, going to get rid of these draconian economic sanctions on countries like Iran and Venezuela. And that person is Bernie Sanders, not meet us, Bernie 2020. Peace. Share your comments in the comment sections down below. Much love.